And so if you were trying to look at your Lizzie M score, taking your GPA, taking your MCAT score, and you're comparing it to the Lizzie M scores of all of the other schools and figuring out where to apply, you're completely missing out on your story. What's going on guys? Dr. Gray back for another, hopefully, entertaining educational video here on YouTube. If you don't already subscribe to this YouTube channel, please do click that little bell notification subscribe button, whatever those things look like, whatever they are, click on them and help support me. I'd love to see this channel grow to reach more pre-med students to give more of you a voice in this space. And that's what I want to cover today. I want to talk about something that is very prevalent on the three letter sites that shall remain nameless. A site that I talk a lot about in my podcast, a site that has reached out to me for support, for help to make them better. Unfortunately, that hasn't really gone the way I've wanted it to go, partly because I haven't heard much from them. So hopefully after watching this video, they'll reach out to me and we can actually help improve them. I won't name them, but you'll know who I'm talking about because today we're gonna to talk about the Lizzie M score. The Lizzie M score is a score that is found on Student Doctor Network. It was created by a user on SDN called Lizzie M. Now Lizzie M used to be, the, the person who ran Lizzie M used to be an admissions committee member at a medical school. I believe now, the, the sources that I have now, say that Lizzie M is kind of a, a group of people now potentially at a different medical school or maybe different medical schools that run that account. And if you look at Lizzie M, you look at the advice that, I'll say she, because Lizzie is a, more of a female name, so I'll use she. Uh, if you look at her account, she gives tons of great advice. Really solid advice, advice that I would give. The Lizzie M score, on the other hand, unfortunately has grown to be kind of a beast of its own. And I actually covered this on the Pre Mid Years podcast, episode 354, I believe. So go and listen to that. If you don't listen to my podcast, The Pre Med Years, I highly recommend you go subscribe there on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to music or podcasts. So Lizzie M created this score some number of years ago as a way to potentially help students figure out how strong their application is, how competitive it is. Right, One of the most popular things on Reddit, on SDN, kind of anywhere among pre-med students is what are my chances? And the Lizzie M score potentially helps you figure out if you're competitive or not, but it, it really doesn't. And let me explain why. Well, it's just a mathematical equation. It takes your MCAT score and takes your GPA and it mushes them together and gives you a score. And then supposedly what Lizzie M and what SDN and what other students would like to tell you is that then you can go and you look at the schools and you look at what their Lizzie M scores are. And you go, okay, I wanna to apply to this school and that school and this school and that school. Unfortunately, that doesn't work and it's garbage because applying to medical schools is much more than just GPA and MCAT. It is, trust me, it is. Your story matters. Where you grew up, the journey that you've been on, the hurdles that you've had to overcome, your story matters. I've talked to enough admissions committee members, deans of admissions, directors of admissions, to know that that's the truth. It's not just MCAT and GPA. Yes, your MCAT and GPA are important. I'm not saying they're not important, but they're only important to a certain level to get you into the door to get your application reviewed. Above and beyond that, your story matters. Now, what is not often talked about with the Lizzie M score is that medical schools aren't going to Student Doctor Network. They're not going out to these other sites and going, hey guys, our Lizzie M score is X this year, right? Our Lizzie M score is gonna be a cutoff of 70 this year. That doesn't happen. What the Lizzie M score is looking at is historical data from that medical school, looking at the acceptance class last year and the data that they have from last year. Unfortunately, that data is trash when it comes to figuring out where to apply to medical school. Because all that tells you 
is what your GPA or what their GPA and MCAT scores were for the class. It doesn't tell you anything about why those students were accepted. And so if you were trying to look at your Lizzie M score, taking your GPA, taking your MCAT score, and you're comparing it to the Lizzie M scores of all of the other schools and figuring out where to apply, you're completely missing out on your story you're completely missing out on your unique traits, your unique experiences, to compare those to the medical schools, to see if you are a fit for the medical schools. What do they want in a student? Obviously, they want smart students. They want students who are going to pass medical school, hopefully in four years, pass the boards on the first try, go into residency, pass the residency exams on the first try, and continue that cycle of producing smart, competent physicians. That's why GPA and MCAT do matter. But above and beyond that, your story matters so much in the admissions committee process that you can't just look at one single score that mushes together your GPA and MCAT and go, okay, this is how competitive I am. These are the schools that I want to apply to. So when you are looking at applying to medical schools, know that you need to do a lot of homework. You need to look at the schools, look at their missions, look at their vision statements, talk to students at the school, find out what their culture's like. If they have an open house, go there, talk to them. That's how you find out about the schools. Find out if you are going to be a good fit. You need to have all of the good stuff that shows that you wanna be a physician, like shadowing and clinical experience. And you need to have a good story that you write about in your personal statement, which is why I have a book all about the personal statement, right? That is important and why I harp on it a bunch. Writing good essays for your secondaries, having a good interview, showing them that you are a good person. Don't narrow your application down into one single score that doesn't mean anything. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you want more information, go check out the Pre-Med Years podcast, episode 354. And for more of these videos, whether it's our application renovation series, our Ask Dr. Gray series, or whatever else we have coming down the pipe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and let your friends know about it too. Have a great day.